uh, native GTK uh, UI. Uh, my name is Quirla McMara, and I've done a number of these over the last couple of years, uh, but these are, this is the update. Uh, so the idea is to use the native GTK widgets for the um, GTK port of LibreOffice instead of using the traditional VCL widgets rendered to look like GTK widgets. Uh, so I'll just run down what's native and in what version they became native. Uh, the file dialog has been native um, for a very, very long time. Uh, the one most recent native thing after that then is native tooltips. After native tooltips, all in 6.0, uh, we had native popovers, which we'll see in calc, and you see them in the uh, slide pane of Impress as well. And after that as well, uh, bootstrapping on the um, Unity menu integration, we reused that to uh, feed native GTK menu bar and menus as well, all native in uh, 6.0. Uh, the slide transitions are all the traditional and new OpenGL slide transitions hosted in a native uh, GTK GL uh, window. Uh, the requirements there are that I think um, it's the core uh, profile is the only thing that's supported there. So there was a number of modifications to the older uh, OpenGL transitions to get them to work within that uh, core profile. So all of these um, nice new transitions that I think are mostly sponsored by Calabra that, that work here uh, worked out of the box, and it was the very, very old ones, including the really, really cheesy slide transition that actually caused the most difficulty because they were so old that they wouldn't work in the uh, supported core profiles. Uh, in 6.1, then, what we brought online was the uh, native uh, warning dialogue, so that was a pretty big but simple change, just to change all of the uh, message dialogues in one go over to uh, launch native dialogue, and then we have that. Uh, the small dialogue here, the insert break dialogue, is one of the um, poor little unfortunate dialogues that always gets experimented on because it's small and it's simple, and that was converted in 6.1 as well. Uh, what we get here as well, we start seeing is that we get the uh, native um, uh, button ordering of OK on the far right, followed by cancel on the left, and then help on the far left after that. Uh, 6.1 then also had, um, this is another warning dialogue, but it's a demonstration of a warning dialogue that contains extra widgets inside it as well. So this is in the uh, PDF export. If it warns about things, it lists what things are warned in it, just to show that the warning dialogues can host other widgets within them as well. Moving on to 6.2, that's the kind of amount of uh, things that were converted at this stage. Um, the uh, dialogue controller is each simple. Uh, dialogue that just contains one single pane, should we say, is a, a generic dialogue, so a generic dialogue controller, talking 180 dialogues. And all of those multi-tab page dialogues, um, it's impossible to convert all of them in one go. So what you have to do here is come up with a scheme where a tab page can live inside a, a new uh, native GTK dialogue and live within the existing BCL dialogues as well, so you convert them one at a time. So you have to have some kind of a incremental process there. So you get 100 tab pages converted, though you might not see any of them in the native dialog as of yet. But at that stage, then there's 41 um, S of X tab dialogs, which are the multi-tab dialogs. Uh, back in 6.2, we had, well, I got the ones that I was most uh, interested in uh, converted over to native dialogs. Uh, the um, former character, former paragraph, former page, those, those big headline ones. Um, yeah, so there's former character of multi-tab dialogue. Uh, each tab is um, uh, able to exist in a native dialogue and a non-native dialogue. In this case, all of them are native. When all the tabs are native, then the dialogue can become native. And we have here a, a native um, GTK dialogue. What you have at the bottom, then, is a preview widget uh, that's implemented in the GTK side, as GTK drawing area. And then all our existing uh, preview stuff is able to render to an output device, and the output device is, is connected to the drawing area. So you can draw all of those old previews and classic dialogues, and they'll appear in a, um, a, 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 a welded dialogue such as this. Um, one of the things we discussed last year was the difficulties of those multi-tab dialogues when there's so many tabs that they don't fit on one line. Uh, what to do about that? Uh, so it's most obvious in themes like this one where the tabs are quite large, and there's a large amount of space around them, and the font is large, so the tabs are, are huge. 
So uh, the uh, available built-in stuff in the GTK dialogues for or the GTK notebooks uh, for this is that um, once you get beyond a certain point, you get little scroll arrows on the left and right, and you can scroll through uh, what tabs are available to display all the multiple tabs, a small section at a time along the top. Uh, there's a lot of, um, that's attempt one, should we say, the default approach. Uh, the problem there, of course, you can't see all the tabs at the same time. So there's a lot of uh, pushback there saying that they want to see all of them. Number two approach then is that uh, if you get, m which is along the, um, the, 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 H the HIG standards for, for GNOME, if I recall correctly, is that if you have more than eight tabs along the top, that you put them down the left hand side instead. So experiment with that for a while. But while in the Adwita team there, you can only fit about five or six things in the top. In other themes, you can fit maybe 10 or 15. So now you have a lot of pushback saying, you know, you could have fitted all of those tabs at the top, why didn't you? So try that approach, put all the tabs along the top if they fit, but if you get to a certain point where the, the dialogue begins to grow wide, give up on that and put them down the left hand side again. The uh, problem there then is that once you get to a certain number of uh, entries down the left hand side, they don't fit either. So you get the same problem that you can't see all the tabs at the same time and there's significant pushback. Uh, so then we go ahead and we try to do something like we have existingly, where we have two layers of, 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 of tabs. And that way then you get two notebooks, you put one above the other, and you get this uh, double-decker-like appearance. The catch with that, though, is that in the GTK notebook, there has to be at least one active tab. So if you put two notebooks together that are pretending to be one notebook, you will have an active tab in your upper one as well as your lower one. All right, so there's a couple of things I've tried there back in the time. Things were getting a little bit ridiculous at this point. Um, we're trying to uh, uh, remove that active tab, try to make it look visually like it's, uh, it's not there. A bunch of approaches there, nothing really properly works, so nothing works. So I say maybe we'll try and uh, pretend that that active tab is there for a reason. You end up with something like this. You have your two layers <laughs> of... Um, uh, of tabs, and you have this uh, additional tab there that it doesn't do anything at all. It just looks a bit weird. But you know, if you if you click on it, it, um, it swaps the orders of the tabs. It, it does something. Uh, so um, try and pretend that it's there for some constructive constructive purpose. But uh, yeah, nobody was buying that. <laughs> and I came up with uh, so that's 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 that discussion again. Now you have all the tabs where people want them. But nobody likes that little indicator tab because it, it doesn't do anything at all. So what we have now is that indicator tab is actually still there. It still exists, but it's been themed into invisibility. It's been themed to have no existence whatsoever, no width, no height, no background, no foreground. Uh, it exists for the purpose of having an active tab, uh, but it doesn't exist. And when you tab through the tabs, uh, it skips this invisible, uh, not there tab. So that gives you what people wanted, which was pretty much the status quo, except that um, it's now native, and you can do all the other existing native things, and you can do all the theme things, and you can, you can cursor through it, and it all works perfectly well, uh, and the um, magic extra tab is gone. So yeah, so now you have your, your native GTK dialogues, um, but with double-decker support. So that was the uh, crisis last year with the GTK notebooks. So that was GTK2, GTK3, um, the number of generic dialogues controllers has expanded gigantically. The number of tab pages has expanded a lot as well. And the SPX tab controller dialogues, I think, is in 6.3, it was nearly complete, but not quite. So that's 6.3, which has gone out the door recently enough. Now, uh, included in 6.3 is um, uh, the calc uh, range dialogues. The way they work is they start off um, fully expanded on the left hand side like that. They have a little button on them that shrinks them down. And when they shrink, um, the, the edit box and the button uh, remain visible. Uh, everything else is hidden. Uh, and all that remains visible is the two widgets there and the your container ancestor. The dialog then shrinks down. At that point, on the left hand side, it's a modal dialog. Uh, once it's shrunk down, or actually once you focus in the edit area, it becomes a modalist dialog. And you can go and you can select a range of cells in calc, and then when you let go of the mouse, it, it pops back up and it's um, modal again. So they change modality um, depending on where your uh, focus is. There's a lot of them. There's a really a huge amount of them in calc. So before the ability to do that, there was like maybe like 50, 60 calc dialogues. Once you implement that, then you have so many statistics dialogues and sampling dialogues, and there's loads of them like that. Uh, at this stage then, 
and you have about two windows that are like this contour editor that are basically full-blown applications. They have a status bar, they have a tool bar, and they interact totally. And you have here is a native GTK tool bar, native GTK status bar, and again, this um, drawing area, which then all the existing uh, logic that exists uh, for the contour uh, uh, editor uh, is pretty much unchanged. So it uses the DCL APIs, and there's a little uh, intermediate widget that manages that. So whereas traditionally the whole top level window is um, uh, your, your, the window that gives you all the events and transposes them to the VCL ones, that same logic now exists just at a smaller widget level. So you can put what used to be the top level entire window logic down as a, as a widget level logic. So you can host those widgets within uh, an otherwise native dialog. Uh, what we have now in, uh, yes, just, just in the border of 6364 is the edit engine. That's where we have the, uh, the edit engine uh, uh, inside a widget. So here we have, uh, uh, this is the, the calc one, um, header footer editing. So you can put fields into them and you can select them, you can change the color of regions and things like that. So that's a pretty uh, complicated affair. Uh, the rendering here is uh, backing on to Armin's work to uh, uh, be able to host edit engines within the, the drawing layer infrastructure has been reused to do the exact same thing uh, within the native widget infrastructure. So uh, that's pretty, pretty cool there. The same one is used in the uh, spell checker as well. I think in 6.4, uh, no 6.3, there's now a standing issue with accessibility, but I have um, a back port for that in Garrett. So that layer of patches in Garrett is to give uh, accessibility support to edit engines within widgets. This is the pivot table. Um, and for the pivot table, you have to support drag and drop between elements. Um, so this is an example of that, and this works perfectly well. This is a snapshot in time of actually dragging that three from the available fields to the row fields. Highlights the destination widget, uh, cut there, flight, and, and the drag in the case. So this is a drag and, drag and drop working um, in welded widgets as well, welded dialogues. Yeah, this is very new in, in 6.4. Uh, this is the uh, wizards, what I've been working on for the last week or two. Uh, this is now working on uh, master for the selected database wizard and the mail merge wizard and a few other ones. There's quite a few other ones in forms as well. And there was one outstanding one that I'm working on, which um, is the copy tables between databases one that was mentioned in the uh, database talk yesterday. And the, um, the logic for going forward and back is the existing logic we already have. So if any of those cases where we have where people were uh, going back and there was very strange things going on, they'll continue to go on. So it's bug for bug compatible for uh, forward and back. Also noon 6 or 4, Khaled is not here, so I'll steal his thunder on this one. For 6 4, we have uh, working color emojis as well. Um, I'm pretty sure that the existence of emojis will be recorded historically as the fall of civilization, but nevertheless, here they are working. Um, they're interesting in the sense that um, they nearly always require more than one uh, UTF 16 uh, point to uh, d describe them. So we find bugs in our input em engine where it says, uh, the underline that needs to be put underneath the, the E in the cat there. It says it's, uh, it's two, two, it needs to be led to two, but you have an E and then you have two UTF-16 blocks. And then if you put your line underneath the E and the first half of the cat, then the two parts of the cat are split when they're rendered. So they don't combine together to give you a cat, you get two random glyphs. So um, it demonstrates um, interesting parts of the input engine and our UTF-16 being a difficulty there. And the other part of getting that to work is the font config fallback, so that when you get this block, uh, that this emoji uh, uh, code point, and your font is Times New Roman, that it will actually go off and find a, an emoji font to render it, and not attempt to render it in some font that is close to Times New Roman. Because these emojis do exist in a number of fonts, but people expect them in their preferred font. So for the font config fallback, we take away the text English or German, whatever the surrounding text is, and we say, no, no, this is actually uh, an undefined um, Z, S, Y, E, which is the um, emoji indicator. And then there tends to be one font on your Linux box, which is tagged as your preferred emoji font. And 
you get this one, the um, the Android emoji one color or whatever it is, Noto color. I think it is a walkthrough. Yeah. So let me just demonstrate some of that, and I have a cheat sheet of what to demo, just so we can keep track. So let me see now, classically in Calc, there's just a, a native uh, tooltip. Uh, if I knew how to use Calc, this would help. Yeah, and there's your native uh, popover, which is like a tooltip, except different and doesn't have some of the difficulties with having multiple ones at the same time. Uh, so that's that. If we just have a look at, is it maybe define a range has one, does it? Yeah, here's one of these um, shrinking dialogues. Uh, it shrinks down like that. You can select your range. You come back up again. If I go here, yeah, like that. So it all works perfectly fine. If I move over to what I'm more familiar with in Calc, and we go format, uh, let's see, insert, no, format water map. A signature line here has got an example of shadow text for the placeholder text, issues like that. Uh, format paragraph, we'll have another example of, yeah, here's another case of where we have a, um, a combo box which has custom cont in it, content in it, so you have a, a popover again, and you have a whole set of uh, custom rendered lines as we had in the older case. Similarly, you can host your color selector inside a popover as well. And there you have um, a classic value set being hosted inside, something like that. And again, we have a custom, another custom widget, the classic v, uh, VCL, originally VCL layer custom widget, which is now reimagined to work inside in that. And crucially as well, the accessibility stuff that we did for all of this it works as well. So you have your native GTK uh, accessibility stuff for the native GTK widgets, and then when you come to the custom widgets, it's bridged again so that you get accessibility um, that was written specifically for these custom widgets uh, also works. So it's traditionally, again, we plugged our accessibility in at the top level widget for the entire top level window. Now we can also plug it in at a, a per widget level. So you get accessibility uh, for the custom widgets there also. Um, if we show insert table, another case as well of the overlay scroll bar so it's a native gtk uh, tree view and then we have the scroll bar widget like that that appears and goes uh, uh, that all works very well in high dpi as well we're not running high dpi here but when you are you get all that goodness for free as well and it's uh, quite nice and the uh, scrolling benefits and all that um, let me see Mm -hmm. Ah, yeah, former character. The um, combo boxes can include uh, pictures as well, so you can continue to uh, show your spell checking images that, that it's available like that. And if we insert a section, if we insert a section, and for example, we go to uh, the password protection there, uh, we get the caps lock indicator is on, comes for free, you get all those small little uh, improvements as well. Ah, yeah. This is tools options, the more obscure features as well, such as um, the Firefox persona integration, uh, right we have here now of course is everything that you see in the main window is uh, VCL pretending to be GTK except for the menu bar, the menu bar is a, is a native GTK menu bar. But when you select a persona, the, the menu bar is, is colored as well, along with everything else, so you get Mozilla persona integration. And if there is an image, then the image is offset so that it's one image, not duplicated on both parts of it, but continuous across the whole thing. Uh, so that's persona integration as well. 
uh, table of contents was the other one I mentioned at the last time I was presenting this as being a difficult one. This now fun functions as well. The preview widget was particularly difficult in this case because of how it uses a, a writer backend in a particular way that nothing else does to render stuff. So your preview widget works there as well. Beautifully fine. And then there's a small uh, animation that is built into GTK when you um, add widgets uh, while it's visible. So you should see a little kind of a slide in effect there on the on that. You get that as well. Obviously, you get like whatever animations exist exist. So that that uh, comes in gradually like that. Uh, yeah. So then my most recent thing is the wizards. So. Uh, database is a wizard. Yeah, so now you have a native GTK assistant uh, for the wizards as well. Uh, you get the roadmap down the left hand side, and if you do interesting, if you change uh, what database you use, the roadmap obviously updates to say what the next few steps are going to be, and you can next and back through it. And it's all fine. Um, the assistant is not a GTK dialogue, it's a GTK window. We assume that all dialogues are GTK dialogues, so doing this was a little bit more complicated than I anticipated, but uh, it works perfectly fine now. Um, let me just demonstrate at a larger font size, uh, maybe an even bigger font size, the emoji stuff. So, there you go. So you get a cat. You hit a space bar again, you get a Multitude of cats to select from. Bunk, 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 bunk. Yep, there you go. Lots of cats. It's all very beautiful. So I um, I demoed, I demoed the cat to my uh, youngest, and he uh, said, "How long did that take you?" And I said, uh, "I suppose it took me about 20 years, really, to get the get the cat rendered." 20 years, he said. Yes. Yeah, it took you 20 years. It took me two minutes to get a dog. So plenty of dogs. Uh, right. <laughs> it was worth the time, yeah. Yeah, so that's emojis, the most uh, recent thing there. Uh, okay, so that's the end of the demo. So it gets kind of boring again. That's the walkthrough. Yeah, so what's left to do? Um, I think you find, probably find it hard to find a dialogue that isn't converted at this point. Uh, these are the ones that I know about. Um, from the bottom, the print dialogue, because when I went to do the print dialogue, it was still being modified by some of code, so I just put it to the back of the queue again. So there's no reason, uh, except for the timing that it's not converted. There's the calc um, comma separated value dialogue, which is just um, a big dialogue um, because it has a, a large custom widget and it's large, then kind of intricate accessibility for the custom widget. All the custom widgets are very expensive uh, to do. I wanted to complete the wizards uh, because there's a copy table wizard in base that I needed to do. I did that um, yesterday, the day before, so I think I'm finished with wizards, so that's great. And then uh, going back to the top, then uh, the mail merge dialogue that we all see, the wizard, there's actually another mail merge dialogue that's older than that, that still exists. Uh, that dialogue and this database preview dialogue in Writer both have that um, database selector widget you might have seen where you select the tables from it. So that particular widget appears in two or three dialogues. So that needs to be done as well. And then the options dialogue, the large options dialogue, I believe all the tab pages are converted. But that dialogue itself allows extensions, particularly dictionary extensions as an example, to host their own options pages inside that dialogue. So we'll have to come up with a, a, a mechanism for that. I have, a, I have a, 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 a way, I know what way I'm going to do it, but it'll take some implementation. Yeah, but uh, it's looking reasonably good. I'd, I'd hope to be finished by now, but um, I'm not far away, but I'm always never far away. So yeah, that's, um, that's all I've got.